Remember when smartphones and stereoscopic dual screen systems like the 3DS weren't the order of the day? And portable gaming meant enjoying your original Game Boy in all its monochrome glory? Well, that was only glorious until the sun went down because it was impossible to see the screen without shining a light on it because it was an LCD display with no backlighting. You see, LCDs, whether they're the simple ones in things like a Game Boy or a calculator, or the more complex ones in modern flat panel monitors and televisions, cannot actually produce their own light. OLEDs are different, you can learn more about those here. But conventional LCD screens solve this problem by putting a light of some sort behind the panel, which shines through the LCD, illuminating the image so you can actually see what's going on. And even though older CRT monitors didn't have this issue because they used phosphorescent materials that glowed on the screen, LCDs quickly became more popular due to their lower weight and power consumption, not to mention their smaller size and eventually higher image quality. So backlights became a fixture in modern displays. Earlier flat panel monitors used backlights called cold cathode fluorescent lamps, or CCFLs. These were basically just tubular bulbs, like the ones you'd find installed in an office, but smaller, installed behind the LCD, and they're actually pretty similar as well to the cold cathode tubes that modders use for case lighting. CCFLs were cheap and easy to install in displays, but had a number of limitations. They were heavy, they consumed a lot of power, and they couldn't regulate the brightness of small areas of the screen with any precision whatsoever, since it was only a few bulbs that would illuminate the entire screen, resulting in issues with black levels and image accuracy that left a lot to be desired. CCFLs also had the issue of taking several minutes to achieve full brightness after you turned them on, much like a, a light bulb can take some time to warm up. And even though some CCFLs were marketed as wide gamut, meaning they had different phosphors inside the bulbs that could produce more colors, LED displays quickly displaced CCFLs when they hit the market due to their lighter weight, lower power consumption, and greater black levels. But even with these advantages, there were still some kinks to work out. A run-of-the-mill LED monitor replaces those bulbs with LEDs, which is cool, but it uses blue LEDs with yellow phosphors to create white light which makes a nice enough looking picture, but because the LEDs themselves are blue, the backlight still emits a lot more blue energy than red or green, making colors inherently a little lopsided. So for a while, wide gamut CCFLs, for all of their flaws, still offered better color reproduction than LED backlit panels. Until more recently, when these wide gamut CCFLs were dethroned by either RG phosphor monitors, which use red and green phosphors combined with blue LEDs, or the higher-end RGB LED displays, which have red, green, and blue LEDs in the backlight. Both of these technologies enable the monitor to emit more pure red, green, and blue energy, making for more accurate color without the drawbacks of CCFLs. But LED backlights differ in more ways than just color, as some consist of a full array of LEDs behind the screen, while others are only edge-lit with LED bulbs around, well, the edges of the display. Edge-lit displays use a special layer called a diffuser to spread the light out over the entire screen area and are commonly found in smartphones and less expensive desktop and television displays. Full array LED backlights tend to give higher picture quality, but are a little bulkier, not to mention more expensive than their edge lit counterparts. Some LED displays use their full arrayness to enable a feature called local dimming, which means that they can actually adjust the brightness of small portions of the screen on the fly for more accurate black levels and color saturation. But regardless of exactly what type of LED screen you end up buying, try and find out whether it uses PWM or DC for its backlight dimming. Whether it's for local dimming or just for turning down the overall 
brightness of the image coming out of the display. Now you might be familiar with these terms if you've shopped for case fans, for example, but what they mean for monitors is this. A PWM display dims itself by making the backlight flicker a certain number of times per second. The light is always on at the same brightness. It's just actually off some of the time, and so you'll perceive it as dimmer. And while PWM is easy for manufacturers to implement, some people do find this super fast flickering distracting and fatiguing on their eyes, which is why some companies market their DC, that is voltage control backlight monitors, as flicker free. But hold on a second, Linus, come on. Backlights? That's old technology. OLED generates its own light and is becoming increasingly popular. Well, that's true. But for now, the vast majority of displays out there use backlighting of some sort and they tend to be cheaper than OLEDs without some of the longevity and burning concerns that come along with OLED technology. So while, uh, you know, getting a fancy OLED screen might seem kind of appealing to you, you got to make sure that you monitor just how much money you have in your bank account before you go for it. And speaking of terrible jokes, Audible.com is not a terrible joke. They're the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, fan fiction. Actually, I don't know how much fan fiction they have, unless you count, like, Fifty Shades, but uh, they've got periodicals, and audiobooks are great to listen to when you are, oh, I don't know, let's say, uh, assembling computers. You know, it's kind of a mindless activity at a certain point once you get pretty good at it. So having some earbuds in, you can catch up on your reading all day at work without actually missing out on getting any of your work done. Cool, right? Or if you have a long commute, you can run it in your car, you can run it off your phone. It is pretty much freaking awesome for anyone who is time challenged, but still wants to enjoy, whether it's classic literature, more contemporary stuff, uh, even something like, I don't know, like Power of Habit by Charles Charles Duhigg, which is all about like changing habits in your life to breed success in your life, in your business, whatever else. They have something for everyone. And for our audience members, Audible is offering a 30-day free trial of their membership. You just go to audible.com slash techquickie, linked in the video description, browse the, again, over 180,000 audio, I think that's even like an outdated number. I think it's like over 200,000 now. It keeps going up, they keep adding more stuff. And you can download one title for absolutely free and start listening. And as a member, you actually get discounts on additional titles and stuff as well. So check it out at the link, get your 30 day free trial, audible.com slash techquickie. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you want to leave a comment suggesting a future fast as possible, you can do that down there. If you want to check out our other channels, you can do that over there. And if you want to subscribe and follow, well, then come on, you know how to do that, right? Show me that you know how to do that by subscribing and following and all that good stuff.